And on LinkedIn. Yeah, I'm now preparing the live stream also on YouTube. So that takes one or two minutes. And then we're Very good. Yeah. All right. Uh, la, la, la. You may see me drinking, taking sips of wine as this happens, just so you know. Hope you don't mind. Like a boss. We can release your video over here. Ilvers, Sermals, Lithuania. That's cool. Uh, good to... Awesome, awesome, awesome. Right, let, me get, let me browse Marco. Marco is somewhere around Dubai. Do it on Algorand. Red, I think the last time you and I talked, you were on the streets of Amsterdam, I think. No, on the streets of Norway, I think. Norway, that's right. That, no, it was, yeah. You were on the streets <laughs> in know, Northern Europe somewhere. Yeah, that's cool. Um, all right. Uh, okay. La, la, la. Alcoholics. Oh, that's a good one. We're going to them there. And Echo X. Cool. All right, hopefully no one tags me as a spammer. We know what to do, Gordon, when we got a spammer, right? No, uh, I mean, hopefully no one tags me as a spammer. We'll see. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm bombing a lot of groups just because I'm that kind of guy. Oh, we want that one. And maybe as a briefing for Reds and, and Itai, so the, the people that are usually joining the call uh, or going to the YouTube channel or watching the recording, are from all over the place. This is like an international community with private investors, people with funds, people from tech uh, backgrounds, so different kind of uh, expertise. But the audience only is really good. As you maybe have seen already also on our channel, the Crypto Wednesday channel, the previous guest, and this is show number 25. So this is a magic number. Yeah. We, Gordon, we had some fantastic guests on the show, right? Oh, from, doing great. From, from president's candidate Brock Pierce wow. to to Alex last time, you know, really cool. Michael Turpin. Michael Turpin. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of the big guys. Okay. Uh, la la la. So on my side we are ready. So the we are. Oh, we got more people ready. coming in. All right. Well, people. Well, people will come in. Oh wait, my video was off. That heaven forbid. What? What the heck? Uh, one second here. Let's see if I can get this better. That's good. Yeah. Hold on. We we need the full Gordon experience. Um. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop off and I'll immediately drop back on just so I can get my w proper webcam working. Oh, yep. good. We got more people. No worries. Ah, Marat also joining the call. Good. Big endorser of the Momentum Protocol, Momentum Labs project. Cool. Recording on the deck. Darn it, why is that not doing the right camera? Give me one second. Yeah. 
Yep. Wait on it. <clears throat> oh my gosh! There you go. High res, 1080. That's better. That's exciting. Okay, let's see. Uh, Itai, can you also put on your uh, camera again? Yes, yeah, sure. Go. Cool. Itai. Red. Yeah. Cool. So Itai, okay. sometimes sometimes you have like a shaved head. Sometimes you have like you know. <laughs> hair that I'm jealous of. Can, can you please explain this? Why the, the one moment to moment it's different? Because you're getting me Actually, jealous. Yeah. So the the image that I took uh, that you used for uh, <laughs> for the poster is actually uh, me after there were there were actually there were news where uh, Corona travels through hair or some uh, crazy stuff. It was really back when uh, when it all started and everything was like you know no one knows what to do. Okay, so you need to shave your hair. Fine, <laughs> just took it off. <laughs> Fair, fair enough. Okay, well, good. Now, yeah, so, now we understand. Yeah, yeah. So uh, usually I'm like that, a little messy in the hair, but uh, it's fine. You know, it's my. Well, you look kind of mean like, in that one. Me? No, 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 no. You look, you look, you look like, look like you're too, you're too young to get this reference, but you look like Vincent D'Onofrio in Full Metal Jacket. <laughs> exactly the look I was going for, man. You know. Yeah, totally. You know, this is my gun. This is my favorite tool, or whatever it is. There's only one you like know, it. This one is mine. Um, you gotta, you gotta, yeah, definitely. All right, uh, Thunder, should we start? Yeah, yeah the, we're going to start. So good afternoon, everybody, or good evening if you're in Asia market. Good morning if you're in the U.S. market. Uh, so this is Gordon and Sander again. This is the live Crypto Wednesday show. This is very special because this is our 25th show. So we are celebrating big time. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're really happy. So today we have two of, well, we, we think two of the, 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 the best promising startup projects around the scene from the blockchain and tech scene. We're gonna let them introduce themselves in, in a little bit. But in the meantime, Gordon, before I hand over to you, because we've got some new people uh, on board, we're now also streaming live on the YouTube channel. So the first part of the show is where Gordon and myself um, discuss with the guys where they're from, their background, what they're excited about, what, to, what their product is all about, then we dive into. If you have any questions in the first part, please use the chat box below. So you can write your questions. We can integrate them in the conversation. But the second part of the show, we will uh, unmic the audience. So you can start to ask your questions to Red or to Itai, who are, are most likely happy to answer your questions to give you full insight. Uh, we are recording this call. So we are streaming live on YouTube. And we will also publish the video on YouTube so you can share with the community. And that's the goal of the Crypto Wednesday show that Gordon and myself started mid-2020. We said, okay, let's let's give back to the community. Let's get our industry friends in the show involved so we can share news, insights, latest developments, uh, and, and much more. And now going to the show. Uh, so for people that don't know me, my name is Sander de Bruin. I'm from Amsterdam in the Netherlands. I do know both our guest speakers that are here today quite well because I'm involved myself with both the project from Red, which is called Europe Chain. And I'm also involved for quite some time already with Itai and his Momentum Labs team. Uh, but before we introduce him, Gordon, because you're in a different place in the world this week, where are you now, my friend? So, well, thank you, Sander. It's good to see you again. Uh, I look forward to speaking with our guests. So I guess a couple of items here. I'm Gordon Einstein, uh, the founding partner of Crypto Law Partners. I'm be happy to be doing episode number 25 with Sander here. That's cool. I'm broadcasting live from the Super Paradise Beach Club in Mykonos, Greece. And when I turn the camera around, actually, I'll do it now. I don't know if you can see the beach out there, but life is not bad. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm here with my family, actually. That's that's Evelyn. She's my co-host. Cool. Yeah. Sister-in-law, Maurizio, wave. I'm, I'm, with, I'm with the whole crew here. And if you see me, cool. you see, take a drink of my glass of wine. You know, I'm in the proper spirit of Crypto Wednesdays. So, and, and so anyways, very glad to be back here. Just you no know, standard disclaimer. This is a live show. If you're one of those clever Zoom bombers, you're not going to throw us off. We've dealt with you so many times. I will just give you the Nigerian funeral wave and kick you right off the show. And we will be laughing at you the rest of the time. So don't think you're clever. Uh, I've done this so much. I, I kind of love Zoom bombers because I just get to like rip them to shreds. So if you're out there, you know who you are. Anyways, um, but um, again, this is in support of the crypto community. Very happy to be doing this. We've made just a ton of connections between our guests and our speakers. So, Sandra, let's, you know, <laughs> appearances notwithstanding, it's not the Gordon and Sandra show. So let's, no, no. Get, let's get to our guests and just kind of launch. Yeah, let, 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 let's kick that off. Maybe, Red, we, we start with you. We do a random order. So maybe you can give us some, some background on who you are, where you're from, 
what have you done in the past and and wh what are you building now but don't don't review all the secrets on europe chain but just a just a little background yeah so i'm a i'm a typical uh, tech entrepreneur i would say uh started computer science and business administration as an additional course because i never envisioned myself to be a software developer the rest of my life uh, so took the, the, the more general management and entrepreneurship turn. Um, I founded a company called Kahuna, uh, a cybersecurity outsourcing firm uh, 23 years ago um, that I still own. It's managed and operated by a management team and uh, me and my uh, uh, co-owner, we just uh, regularly visit to see everything is uh, fine, everything go is going well. And three years ago, I thought blockchain uh, could really solve some of the issues that I saw in the cybersecurity space. So uh, I bumped into EOS IO, EOS, the, mm -hmm. the, the protocol that was having his ICO, raised uh, 4 billion. Uh, if you guys remember, a lot of FUD uh, since then, that 4 million turned into 11 billion for uh, block one and they are about to release some of their projects in this summer. So we've been waiting for a very long time to see any uh, fruitation of that uh, investment that all the ICO people did. Um, I started EOS Amsterdam, one of the block producers for the EOS chain. Uh, there's many protocols that use the same protocol or same blockchains that use the same protocol. And we are uh, producing blocks for those uh, chains. So um, I think Bitcoin does seven, eight transactions per second, uh, Ethereum 35. And we produce for nine chains that each do 10,000 transactions per second. So we are responsible for 90,000 transactions per second capacity. One of those chains is the Europe chain. I envision uh, a world with mil millions of transactions per second. And I envision a world where a part of those transactions will be uh, organized around a, a legal ecosystem, a legal framework, a legal. So we launched the Europe chain to be GDPR supporting. We're launching, or we're working on launching a chain for India. I, I'm sorry, the lawyer and me, which is basically 99% of me, immediately has to jump in and completely scramble the whole script. And you're just gonna have to deal with it. What does it mean to be GDPR supporting? GDPR supporting. So it is a base layer. So it's a base protocol that provides uh, a smart contract capacity for an application. So an application uh, can run on our chain and it's up to the application, of course, to be fully GDPR compliant. So it's their job to be compliant. We support that by offering a chain where the whole sign up process, the whole um, all the block producers are for, from Europe. So you, 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 mm. the agreements are in place to fully structure it in, in that sense. We offer uh, privacy impact assessment uh, consulting to, to work with the, the project to make it fully GDPR compliant. And the number one question always everybody asks, what about the right to be forgotten? Well, the right to be forgotten is not an absolute uh, implementation demand. So if you are banking with your bank and you say, I don't want to be a customer of you, of you anymore, it's not that they are throwing away uh, all the backup tapes because you don't want to be their client anymore. No, they right. manage a list of clients that don't want to be their client anymore. And basically that's what we do as well. So we, we uh, limit access to the, the full chain through history nodes and uh, the, the service providers that run those nodes need to comply to either technically implemented uh, filter lists or um, the, the, the members of the blockchain need to comply to uh, the, the rules and regulations that we have set. So we, we have fully enabled, we worked on over a year how to transfer um, all the European regulations into the EOS IO protocol. Interesting. And when you run multiple blockchains, you're a, a block producer for multiple platforms or what, what, can you tease that out a little bit? Yeah. So we, the, the EOSAO protocol works with uh, 
depending on the chain, we Europe chain is a permission chain, so you have to request to become a block producer and you need to comply to regulations. But the EUS blockchain, you can just uh, rec produce yourself and become a block producer. The, so there's 450 of them. Uh, the top 70 uh, are getting paid. Uh, we're number 55 right now, uh, and that fluctuates. Uh, we have been in the top 14. Um, the top 21 produces, pre really produce the chain and that fluctuates and rotates all the time. So to get the speed that you need uh, and still have a decent sense of security, um, the protocol implements 21 different block producers or 21 independent mining pools, you could call them. Mm -hmm. uh, organizations that run multiple systems because we, we don't just run one node. We run for each chain, a whole ecosystem of, of servers, API nodes, full nodes, history nodes, that sort of thing. Um, and it's delegated proof of stake. So people vote for us as a block producer. Uh, now, three years later, we are very respected in the community. Uh, we build a, a, a lot of back-end additional tooling. Uh, we do a lot of uh, source code re reviews. We do a lot, uh, support a lot of projects. Mm -hmm. And for that, they, they vote for, for us as EOS Amsterdam. And with all the block producers in Europe, we've launched the Europe chain. So it's a consortium chain of five companies that founded it and uh, it's being expanded with, uh, because I, I think blockchain is just an IT stack. So I want block producers um, that currently are telcos, system integrators, everybody that has a seven days a week, 24 hours operation running servers can be a block producer at our chain. Got it. There's a, there's a lot to dive in here, and we'll, we'll definitely be teasing this all apart, but let me get to our next guest, Ite. Honored to meet you, and yeah, someone I think pointed out you look like a younger version of me, which I have mixed <laughs> feelings. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure how to process that comment, uh, but you know, hey, thank, thanks, thanks, uh, whoever threw that out there. Uh, you definitely have more hair, so God bless you. So, <laughs> well, yeah. You know, at least now you do. You know, now that yeah, you let no, it grow. Yeah, out now I do exactly. Yeah, the, I think Elvers like you made that comment. Thanks, thanks, buddy. I'll remember that. Um, yeah, yeah. So, did, tell tell us. We'll, we'll we'll go into both your backgrounds in the sort of next round. Um, I always like to say there's the Marvel Marvel origin story, but let's start with what you're working on now because I, I know it's fascinating. I know Sandra was very enthusiastic about it. Just kind of tell right. us your your current work and vision, and then we'll kind of go into the backstory next step. Okay, so um, I created, um, well, I joined uh, Momentum uh, a year and eight months ago as a CTO. Um, I was setting up uh, basically the lab, lab arm of uh, Momentum, which uh, was uh, in charge of uh, creating AI technology for loyalty programs, uh, giving, uh, giving brands uh, the ability to predict uh, things uh, like uh, churn, people leaving their brand, understanding the future revenue, being able to create a secure uh, loyalty program over a blockchain, uh, we basically give uh, give brands a full stack for for creating very smart loyalty programs. Uh, we we don't uh, we don't especially focus on uh, on uh, on uh, one of out out of our three kind of uh, layers of the product, which are which are the blockchain, where you can uh, create uh, create uh, programs, give points, exchange point, create coalitions between brands, let's say airlines, hotels, etc. We utilize the blockchain as kind of like a security layer and more of like um, um, a place where you can, uh, well, you can, I can call it the security layer, but the place where data and uh, and where a place uh, where you have a kind of like a one true source for for if uh, for if you want to examine transactions, you want to audit transactions, you want to be sure that no one is manipulating uh, the data in some way or form. Um, so, uh, let, let me jump in because I'm just gonna yeah. do me. Um, to me, that's inherent to blockchain. But that's its yep. fundamental value proposition. Exactly. What, what you know, the the fact that you have a single source of truth and it's auditable, and everyone can reprocess their transactions to get to the same result. What makes you different? Basically, if uh, if you're looking at our uh, our uh, our project is uh, is looking to bridge between a very kind of like a traditional uh, retailers uh, where blockchain is not a very kind of uh, uh, a common word between their uh, their kind of like a dialect. 
Um, and we create uh, something that uh, delivers a lot of trust uh, where there is a problem today, creating alliances between companies where there is a lot of uh, trust that needs to, to exist before even trying to create an alliance, let's say like legal contracts. Um, and and so is, is that trust created you know, by virtue of the technology or the contractual relationships or how, how do you go about constructing that trust? Okay, so basically every every brand um, has has a chance to become a, a node for for our hyperledger fabric. Uh, they get uh, some sort of like um, the ability to to control or or to view or to be very transparent with the let's say the alliance that they are a part of, or generally speaking, every kind of point or asset that is being generated mm. um, on on their brand. Uh, our our kind of like a strategy for for the crypto uh, side of uh, of the blockchain is uh, the fact that we're going to use uh, momentum as kind of like a middleman coin as well uh, for trading. We're going to create a loyalty points exchange where brands can launch their loyalty program over our platform and allow other people to actually exchange their uh, their assets for crypto assets. Uh, for we will we're going to start with a with a momentum kind of a crypto launch. So basically, people who who want to trade, uh, let's say uh, uh, we have a customer called uh, Zoo Center TLV here in Israel, which is like a, a pet uh, chain. They can either select to exchange their points or redeem them for for future uh, kind of like uh, discounts. Uh, so we utilize blockchain in a way where where we see fit. Uh, we use it as a tool um, to support uh, the rest, uh, the rest of uh, our operation, which is uh, AI, and uh, we have uh, a retention marketing platform. Uh, it supports our entire stack. We we truly believe that the blockchain should be involved more, where trust is uh, is kind of like a strong topic, uh, and where uh, user information is uh, has to be kept uh, kept in a trustworthy place and cannot be manipulated, especially when you're talking about uh, loyalty assets that are actually worth money. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you don't want people to, to mess around with that, especially with, uh, I think it was uh, 200 million uh, cyber attack, attack attempts on loyalty programs last year. Uh, most of them, uh, to all of them, were, were probably um, could have been mit- mitigated if blockchain existed, uh, existed uh, for, for the company and was attacked. In many cases, about 70%. Uh, and I, Sandra, I think I'm hearing a slight commonality between uh, Europe Chain and Momentum and that they're both maybe a consortium play a little bit, mm-hmm. like a, a bringing in disparate parties to participate in a single platform and getting additional synergies between the participants. Is, Red and Ita, is that fair to say? You're, you're part, of, part of the value you're creating is the aggregation of these different players on, on a single platform? The aggregation and the fact that uh, that uh, we're we're trying to be like kind of uh, the company that uh, tries to educate uh, the the more traditional customers uh, for using a uh, blockchain in order to to expand it in their company every possibility that exists in, uh, in blockchain and crypto. Uh, so we're kind of like uh, creating a Trojan horse using the AI, basically allowing us to join companies uh, and give them like a kind of an undeniable uh, value day one. Uh, and allow them uh, later to launch their entire program on our platform, on our blockchain, which is... Uh, which, yeah. It's interesting that you're pro-security, but you're calling yourself a Trojan horse. I'm... Yeah, it's <laughs> fine. You know, we'll, we'll talk about, uh, about my, uh, my past in, uh, in a second, but uh, sure. Trojan horse I mean, is, uh, is kind of like a tool for us to get into a company and start expanding our operation, especially uh, f- well, kind of like pushing them towards launching their loyalty assets or their reward programs over a blockchain, allowing people to utilize the, the full kind of, uh, of uh, utilize the benefits of, of crypto, blockchain, trend, uh, exchanging points. Mm. So definitely, yeah. Interesting. All right, well, you, you kind of naturally led into it, which is helpful. So I, I always like to ask everyone, you know, give us, just like in the Marvel movies, Wolverine has an origin tale. Well, you two yeah. are both okay. superheroes. So I'm, I'm sure you got origin tales. Um, Red, let's start with you. So, I I, I know you were born, but <laughs> well, so uh, that that's that's you know that's my educated guess. So, well, give us a little bit about your background, your education, where you're from, and the, the path that took you down this long road to crypto and blockchain. And you know, I always find that stuff fascinating. So, why don't we start off with you? Okay. Well, I'm 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 53, so I I uh, was uh, in in my puberty when the personal computers. Uh, became affordable for households and 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 uh people i've never heard it anyone describe it quite that way but cool 
Yeah, no, I mean the the what was it? The Commodore sixty four and mm -hmm. uh, that sort of that sort of computers. So I I, I played a lot with uh, computers at that time. I uh, I had um, I chosen to 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 do a. My middle school in uh, in in engineering, but I, I got hooked on uh, computer science and computers, so I switched uh, uh, to to uh, computer science, and um, yeah, my my grandfather was an entrepreneur, uh, my uncle was an entrepreneur, so I I really uh, always looked at that as as being my future and. Um, so I also educated myself to prepare myself for that. So I even did one year of psychology. I did one year of, uh, yeah, so sociology. I, I really tried to educate myself to, to become an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Then uh, when the internet came about, we, we did a lot of, I worked for a, a, an IT company. We did a lot of firewall projects, that sort of thing. Uh, we shipped a lot a lot of firewalls to basically the the whole uh, dutch top 100 of companies mm -hmm. and um, then i uh, decided to uh, um, to start my own company uh, outsourcing uh, cybersecurity services so that is the background and and the the jump to uh, blockchains i already told uh, t told that i i really think blockchain and and uh, momentum basically has that same vision um i think we need we need a lot of transaction capacity to uh, implement that uh, that future um there is people that uh, run and spin up their own blockchain as as momentum does all right so uh, i'm gonna totally interrupt like i always do no. am, I gonna, am i gonna have to kill a zoom, a zoom bomber i love doing this no yes no, so, I, I, I mute him. Maybe it's okay. Let's see. Oh my god, I love Zoom armors. They, they're just like fresh meat to me. <laughs> okay. Anyways, um, okay. So Red, the you're you, you've, you've repeatedly hit the point of transaction throughput, and I get that that's a major feature. I also get that GDPR compliance is a major feature. Yeah. I, one thing I remember talking to, with you about as you were on the streets of Norway yeah. was the sort of like the geographical bounding of your project, you know, hence Europe chain is the name. I, I get how that supports GDPR. Is there any performance enhancement that's gained by, let me take a step back. When yeah, I think yeah, blockchain, there, there is, there let, is. Yeah. Let, me, let me bring the question better. I, I know you're kind of anticipating where I'm going, but let me kind of try to get the idea out. The, when I think about the internet, I think it's something that's inherently global or boundaryless. And when I think of blockchain, I think about it writing on the internet and being inherently boundaryless, not, not, not respecting nor needing to respect geographical boundaries. But there's something interesting about your project that seems to be geographically bounded, yet gained some functionality as a result. And that, that's an interesting frisson of two separate ideas that normally don't seem to mix. So you yeah. got peanut butter and you got chocolate. And tell me why that's a tasty treat. So go ahead. <laughs> well, yeah, it's a very good comment. Uh, uh, yeah, it was this thought of launching a, a chain, especially for Europe. Um, by the way, we are copied. There is a, a chain now for Latin America, the Lat Latin American Caribbean chain. Mm. And we are working on such a chain, a chain for India. Uh, basically the same model. Um, we see that, that, that in India, there's a lot of discussions on the rules and regulations around crypto. Mm. Um, and there is just a need for um, building a blockchain that is connected with uh, their identity system. So the, the Indian, the, it's called the India stack. Uh, it has a lot of components and layers and, mm -hmm. and also an identity uh, part, Adar. And, and we want to build that, bridge that to the, the, the chain that we have. When we were brainstorming about, okay, how do we, grow from EOS as one chain to multiple chains. And at mm -hmm. that time, Wax was uh, launching an NFT chain. Ultra announced a gaming chain. Yeah. Uh, Telos was spinning up a general purpose chain. I said, no, this a chain is a signature engine. At the end of the day, what you do with your wallet is sign a transaction. And that to that signature to be 100% legally compliant, it's very 
convenient to do that in uh, a way that that is fully compliant to the, the geographic area where you are. The world is simply orchestrated that way. The, the legalities in Europe are completely di different than the legalities in the US. And if you look at, for example, to Odyssey Hackathon, uh, a very big ha hackathon in the Netherlands sponsored by 20 large corporations, uh, 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 airlines, uh, energy companies, uh, postal companies, 20 of them, the big brands of the Netherlands, sponsoring already for six years all kinds of blo blockchain uh, initiative, hackathon, competition. There's almost not, not one use case brought to market. Why is that? If you look at the, the use cases, there's a lot of problems. That's kind of sad. Yeah, that is sad. The yeah, major reasons... For, yeah. Yeah, the major reason for that is that at the, at the end of the day, if you are an energy giant and some tech guys think of some sort of interesting use case to build on top of the blockchain, they don't think about gas fees. It's really idiotic that anybody still builds on Ethereum. Um, it is, they don't think about the legalities. So the legal team will kill the project very easy. It will never reach production. It's all POC stage, POC stage, POC stage. It will never move to, to why, what do you need to move from, from POC to production, mm -hmm. business case, legal compliance. And without that, nothing will go to production. And- well, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, are, are you implying, and maybe you are, that whatever business case is being put forward by these projects, it's being killed primarily by the gas fees on Ethereum? That they, like that's the major inhibitor? Forget the legal for, for a second, for, just from for the proof some, of concept phase. No, for, for, for some projects it is. Mm. I mean, uh, got, on, 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 on the chains that we run, there's no transaction fees. And one for another, okay? Yeah, so I mean, this industry is very young and very immature. If you would start a project Step one of the thing that you need to assess is on what project, on what platform should I build? Yes. There's a lot of people just start building on Ethereum. There's a lot of tech outside of Ethereum that has everything that Ethereum is, is Ethereum 2.0 is building is already available. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and by, by the way, this nice restaurant just brought me some shots because they like that I'm doing the show from here. So anyways. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. I'm yeah. jealous. I'm sitting here with my well, wife. Hold on. Here. I, I, I have two, actually, so you can get double jealous. Oh, my God. And I, if, you, if, you, if you hurry over here, I'll, I'll, I'll share this one for you. Yeah. Okay. Well, and, you I'll know. The, but, uh, okay. So, interesting. Well, I mean, the, uh, you know, hold the thought. Let me, let me kind of just go to Ite real, real quick. So, Ite, the, and, and Red, I remember where we are. This is fascinating. I just want to kind of keep it flowing back and forth. Ite, Wolverine origin story. Well, wow, Wolverine uh, origin story. Uh, it's great that I like uh, I like uh, I like a superhero. So uh, yeah, well, I've started really early. Uh, I'm actually 30. Uh, our office is running here uh, in uh, in Israel, in Tel Aviv. Um, I've been in the startup uh, business for the last 12 years since I was uh, even 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 more. Even since I was uh, 17 years old, uh, I got my uh, my first kind of like a real high tech job. I was always excited about. Uh, about computers, engineering, code, how things work, how things are being built, etc. Um, and uh, yeah, I progressed over the years. I've actually been uh, part of uh, some uh, of some kind of like uh, very very familiar companies that uh, has been through uh, a unicorn stage or, or through an IPO. Uh, I've been a part of a uh, recent purchase of uh, JFrog, who recently did an IPO uh, in in New York. Uh, was a part of Viber. Oh, sorry, I, I know the name, but I don't know what they're doing. Yeah. So they're creating basically a, a DevOps kind of a tool for distributing a software, uh, relieving all the efforts of uh, updates, etc. Cool. It's uh, it's an over. I think they're worth five billion dollars today. Um, a company that I was a consultant for uh, sold the company to JFrog, and I and I joined in as one of uh, of the kind of like professional services leaders. Uh, before that, I was uh, I was doing uh, cybersecurity. I was leading uh, a team uh, doing. Uh, pretty crazy stuff uh, for, uh, for uh, well, 
pretty crazy stuff. <laughs> that's that's uh, that's well, uh, okay. Girl, like, you're you're like, like, government yeah, yeah. or not? So I, I was we're, we're, I was taking what I can share. <laughs> <laughs> Ite, we're definitely not letting you off the hook. Okay, the moment yeah, you yeah, say that, create, you know, come on, come on, come on. Offensive. Yeah. Offensive. Give, give me we're, like like what? Yeah, okay. Really, so really offensive government. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Really offensive okay. uh, stuff, but we were dealing with uh, really really bad people and putting them in place. So uh, I was yeah. pretty I was pretty excited about uh, doing this uh, this project. Um, I created uh, the control center for the entire thing uh, uh, together with uh, with the team that I had. Uh, before that, I was a part of a company called Nextpeer. We were doing uh, gaming, uh, creating uh, backend services for online games. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was sold to Viber back in 2015, I think. Before that, um, I was a part of a, kind of like a, an HR uh, platform company that was uh, launched on, uh, on uh, Taze. I, I, I totally uh, interrupt one second. I'm sorry. There, <laughs> just fine. let me interrupt. This is the manager of the restaurant where I am. They're so nice. Yeah. This, uh, again, I want to remind everyone I'm at the Super Paradise Mykonos. This is Tasso. Awesome. Nice to meet you, so, so he said thank hey. you and nice to meet you and you know <laughs> we, this show is sponsored by i i i guess it's sponsored by your chain and momentum and also by the super paradise mykonos so everyone come down here it's awesome the food's great super hospitable they brought me two free drinks they'll probably bring me more i'm not sharing with you you can bring me more dude what the heck um, don't forget the naked beach dude yeah well the, the beach is not naked but there's some good looking specimens better looking than me um so, anyway, so just you know, yeah, yeah, you know, sponsored by. <laughs> so, <laughs> Definitely. Anyways, Et, go ahead, please. So you're, yeah, so uh, I've re- I've really been uh, through the guts of uh, kind of like the start startup in- industry here in Israel. Uh, as you know, it's a it's a pretty hectic nation in every kind of like uh, way and form. Especially uh, the startup uh, scene here is uh, amazing. The amount of uh, unicorns that are being created every year. I think uh, last year we had uh, six. Yeah. And uh, four IPOs from Israel and uh, Nasdaq and uh, and uh, Nice. Um, I've kind of uh, been uh, I've, I've experienced uh, let's uh, let's call it kind of like uh, all the stages of a startup from uh, being uh, one developer uh, to to having a team of uh, of uh, fifty people to being sold, going through an IPO, being uh, losing everything as well, mm-hmm. of course, uh, several times actually. Uh, all, all well, losing the company, not everything. But, yeah, uh, I, mean, I was about to ask. Uh, you know, hopefully, <laughs> no, no. you had some little. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah, I, I always, uh, I always do things uh, smartly. So, um, I think I kind of like uh, arrived here at uh, at Momentum. Uh, if if you guys are familiar with uh, Eyal, uh, he was uh, the original founder together with the two more people of uh, of Mobile Bridge, uh, which is the company that created oh, Momentum. Sure. Yeah. Uh, well, so, Mobile Bridge uh, is pretty famous. Yes. It was. It was a pretty big company, actually. Um, okay. A couple of years ago, there was a pivot uh, towards uh, uh, creating a momentum, which is uh, which was uh, the crypto uh, protocol. Um, and my mission was when I joined the, the company is to create kind of like uh, an AI or a business kind of AI layer uh, to help uh, help brands uh, achieve greater success through their loyalty programs, incorporating blockchain. Of course, uh, we were kind of like tackling a few problems uh, as. Uh, Red was preaching to the choir. Every, every word, I, I, I agree 100% with the fact that uh, we're facing uh, kind of like uh, issues uh, with, uh, with Ethereum now due to the kind of uh, like high, very high gas prices. And we're trying to gap over it, uh, going, uh, moving between, uh, between chains now. And um, the fact that uh, there is a zero governance, uh, it, it might present as a problem, as Red said, to big, uh, big, uh, big retailers. Uh, so my job was kind of, fi- was kind of like, to find the right kind of like mixture between uh, pushing them crypto through their, their their mounts and giving them like a real applicable business case or a business uh, kind of like solution that they can use. And then I can uh, start telling them, listen, guys, you know, if you launch your uh, your uh, your your reward program on our on our on our uh, protocol, which allows people to actually exchange. Uh, <laughs> yes, which allows uh, which allows uh, which allows. Uh, shoppers to to exchange your loyalty points for crypto cash or other loyalty programs um sorry guys i'm, I'm in greece i'm just not i just don't control my life <laughs> so so basically yeah we were kind of like uh, doing it uh, gradually um our first uh, offering when we approach a, cu- uh, a customer is a uh, uh, dude uh, your loyalty program is uh, is losing you money you're just uh, giving away points people are not redeeming redeeming them you're writing them as a as a as a as a debt as as you, uh, you know, I, I, i'm sorry you, you're assuming that or do you 
No, no, no. It's, how, do, it's, how do you it's know, a, how do you know in any particular case that that's that that's wow, true? Listen, every kind of like it's not even one case. It's a, it's probably it's not probably. It's I think that there's an, a specific number. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm not. Really I'm not applying. Yet. It's only. I'm not applying. It's only one program that's not effective. What no, I mean no, no, is when, when you approach programs. That's the problem. That's that's the problem. Most programs, loyalty programs, are not performing well or even performing. That's the big problem. It's just causing losses, but incorporating a smart loyalty program that gives you heads up before things happen. Like people are about to leave your brand two weeks in advance, giving, giving, a, giving our customers the ability to make smart decision using actual insights. Like, um, yeah, listen, this guy is about to churn, but uh, this is the right product to offer him in order to come back or give him a, give him a significant discount on this product. We're offering kind of a range of, of uh, AI models that uh, help customers understand their customers better their customers better the bottom line like basically the our 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 kind of like you can call it um, mission is to help them boost their revenue through the loyalty loyalty program uh if if you're talking about numbers um there is a there is a big that's it's a huge problem you're talking about um i think it was 90 percent of brands are not even utilizing the data to even do anything so that's a, that's a big problem uh, of course their loyalty program uh, data I think in North America alone, uh, the value of unused uh, loyalty assets is about 100 billion. And, you know, that there are 98 uh, percent, there are 98, there's 98 billion uh, US dollars in revenue that is uh, left on the table due to bad customer experience. Uh, 200 uh, million, sorry, 100 billion cyber attacks between 2018 and 2020 on loyalty programs. And I'm not talking about classic phishing uh, kind of like uh, attacks. Most of those attacks are actually employees trying to change the past of the like, kind of like the infrastructure, giving them points, uh, creating a, creating a kind of like um, cashback cards. It's it's a big, very, very big problem. We're Wait, the biggest to... the biggest threat's internal, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a very big internal, internal wow. threat, but that's the most, like, that's most of the cyber attacks. So if you talk about, like, a cyber attack. Uh, Does yeah, money it's, laundering it's like, happen through lo loyalty programs? Yeah. It seems like uh, it could. Yes. Yes. Of course. Yes. Of course. That's why, yes, that's why usually, th that's why we need governance. That's why we need, uh, we need every kind of, like, uh, uh, approval in, in, let's say, uh, kind of that is possible for us to get. Uh, we are FINMA regulated our 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 token, um, but uh, of course money laundering is uh, is definitely a problem if you open if you open the program for exchanging to cash like points to cash, that's when you create a, a problem. That's why we we're always tedious about everything that we release, uh, every feature that release that we release that is related to our crypto. We we do triple due diligence. For everything that we do, um, that's why sometimes we're a little a little slow on uh, on delivering more features and more features and more features. It's just because when you're dealing with such sensitive data as customer mm. data and uh, and asset uh, kind of like it's it's money, loyalty points and loyalty kind of uh, vouchers is money. When you're dealing with that, you need. Well, it's definitely value. It's money. It's it's written as a loss in company books. Interesting. One point. Let let's say that uh, that you issue a point as a company uh, and it's worth uh, let's say a dollar. Uh, you write it as a loss in your books as a company. You have to. That's a, a regulation uh, in most countries, of course. Uh, let's uh, let's say in uh, in Europe for for a fact, in America for a fact, in Israel for a fact. Uh, so, yeah. So basically, we're trying to make uh, customers happier. We want to make a uh, loyalty infrastructure unified. We want to to be to make uh, customers happier through giving them rewards that they can redeem for for crypto. Uh, and for helping them, uh, helping them decide what they want to buy next uh, by using very smart uh, kind of like tools that we have. Interesting. Uh, yeah, so I rolled into, into that uh, to create a very cool kind of like an AI product that involves a blockchain and crypto, which is a challenge. challenge as Red said, the most, uh, most projects are kind of like uh, creating a POC, but they're never going to public. And, uh, and they have uh, like this crazy valuation, which... Uh, uh, sometimes, which uh, you can really, you know, put uh, put the finger where the where the evaluation comes from, uh, and here we are actually creating a business kind of like a case, bringing in the companies, implementing blockchain. First of all, through a, a lot of education, uh, Momentum is going to open uh, an education uh, center, an online education center for blockchains designated for 
enterprises or like retail retailers and and hotel companies that would like to in, involve blockchain in their in their kind of world and their their software stack um, so we're doing a kind of like a, a lot uh, in order for us to be able to integrate our crypto projects into into companies uh, the barrier will will be reduced in, uh, in several years as, uh, as red said the uh, uh, blockchain and crypto is kind of young uh, people need to to get accustomed to it and and yeah, and see blockchain not just as crypto, but as a, as a red said, an IT kind of stack that can be used uh, for, for a lot of benefits. Well, you know, hopefully at some point it's like TCP IP. We all know it's there, but we don't need to know how to program it. And we don't, yeah. we don't need to program WinSocks or anything else. It just kind of happens. Um, red, let me go back to you for a second, because before we kind of open it up to the audience, one, one thing you said, or several things you said struck me. Well, one thing sticking in my mind, which is the extent you have geography bounded consortiums that are I, th I think you're what I heard you imply you can tell me what this right is that these consortiums sort of can peer with each other so you have you know the Europe chain maybe peering with a Latin America chain maybe peering with the India chain I, I'm wondering now of course the word peering is kind of vague but I, I think you probably get my meaning is it is there a connector is it first of all is that concept true and second if it is true how do you form the connector or the gateway between these geographically bounded consortiums? Like, how well, do they talk to each other? Um, we're we're in, in this internet of value and the internet of transactions, um, you can build a web of trust as we call it. So the Europe chain can anchor uh, block headers on a different chain um, there, and there's more things you can do. Every uh, system admin configuration change could be anchored on, an, on a different chain as well. And by creating um, all these pools of capacity, mm -hmm. Europe chain, uh, such a chain for India, uh, anchored to other chains, you can create something that is very, very, very secure. Uh, impossible to hack. So if there is a, a company that individually needs or a project that needs a lot of capacity, you could spin up a five node blockchain, anchor that to a public chain. So it can be a private chain. Uh, nobody sees the content, but you can, you can connect on a trust basis, you can anchor it to the Europe chain. Europe chain is public chain. So you can see that there's no uh, funny business going on with this private chain and you cannot see the trans individual transaction because it's that that uh, pool of transactions is fired up, firewalled off the rest of the internet. So there's multiple models where you can connect. I always joke that we, we will provide uh, blockchain as a service. And I think the last blockchain I ever will spin up will be the Amsterdam traffic light chain. Um, and that shows the vision that we start with the Europe chain as a, as a pretty big one. Um, but as at one point, the transactions are full. I mean, we do 10,000 transactions per second. We can optimize the hardware. We can optimize the software. Let's say we, do, we squeeze out a 10x, then we still don't have anything really performant. It's only 100,000 transactions per yeah. second to power the internet of value we need millions of them so okay. we need to scale this with multiple chains multiple chains anchored to each other mm. our business model that's i think second part of your question why are we doing this uh we're building let me phrase the question better the um, I, I like i liked your point that the regulatory schema in North America and Europe and India are distinct. Yeah. And, and that when you build blockchains that, to use your word, support in the implementation of GDPR or CCPA or the India infrastructure or whatever, that's useful. I, I, I get it. And I also like that you're kind of going against the received wisdom that this stuff is, gains value by being global. Sometimes there's a value in even bounding it geographically which kind of goes against the main, how people think about this by default, but you know, I, I can see that being the case. But I can also see a situation where these 
different geographically bounded and different privacy regime blockchains need to talk and need to cross communicate effectively. For example, you have a company that's operating in both Europe and India and Latin America needs to comply with all of these and probably doesn't want to run a bunch of separate blockchains, probably wants to integrate them or peer them somehow. I'm just wondering, and maybe you haven't gotten here yet, but I'm wondering if there's like a layer on top or a way to integrate them or a way to peer them effectively so that you take advantage of each one's being ge geographically bounded and regulatorily compliant in each zone, but yet they talk enough that you can run your entire enterprise from a single platform. Yeah, I Does think- that makes sense? <laughs> yeah, yeah. In my vision, uh, blockchain is backend technology. So uh, what you need for that client that has uh, services all around the, the world, you need, you need a front end and that integrates in the back end with for customer A uh, on the India chain, on customer B on the Europe chain, or they choose uh, uh, to, to run on a, on a global chain, but then the legal stuff can be very complicated. Mm -hmm. So what we're talking a lot with Indian system integrators, they service uh, a lot of uh, clients all across the globe, American clients, European clients, and local clients from India. And they immediately get it because they are all the time right talking to all these different customers with all these difficult uh, legal regulatory ecosystems that they need to, it's not that they are building a banking application and can sell it to everyone. No, they sell a banking application that really needs to be tailored to the US laws. Mm -hmm. they, they build a banking application that really needs to be tailored to the European laws. So they immediately get it. They immediately say, oh, this is a brilliant idea. So you use the same protocol stack so the developers only need to learn one protocol and and we can deploy a multi, multiple geographical chains on top of that we are building what we call an enablement layer which is an identity system and an asset management system and some other pieces of technology that that applications need so you don't need to build your own identity system we got that fixed for you and we're building that in the latest technology um, so DID, decentralized identities with verifiable credentials. So they are buzzwords of the future in the identities, in the self-sovereign identity space. So we're building the, the base layer stack. We're building pieces of the puzzles um, that you need. And on top of that, application can build their, their use case, their, their business. Interesting. Um, let me open this up to Marco. I, I know you're being called, hey, there you are. So Marco's a very good friend of mine. He's working with me at the Emerging Technology Association. He's deeply involved in Casper and not just Casper. Um, he's tapped into the ideas of privacy and identity very closely. And Marco, I, I don't know if you caught the beginning of this conversation, but there was a little bit of a blockchain smackdown in the sense that no one is a fan of Ethereum and its gas fees and they're looking for alternatives. Uh, Rets. Eos, uh, Ite, I'm not quite sure what momentum is built on, or if you spun it up from scratch. So, uh, our private private blockchain is a hyperledger fabric. That's right, you uh, said that. So you're yeah. you're you're big blue, and uh, and uh, Ethereum for uh, for a smart contract, and uh, definitely we're getting uh, smacked by uh, the gas prices. Actually, when uh, when we launched our token on uh, Uniswap, I think uh, I picked up uh, the gas prices at 6.5k for setting up a, a contract. Uh, which was uh, which was crazy. I was like flabbergasted. I was like, what, what what's going on? Why? What is going on? So uh, and then it really like I was like, yeah, listen, guys, uh, we gotta go cross chain. We gotta solve this. We need more transactions per second. As Rhett uh, Rhett uh, said uh, mentioned before that this is also kind of like a big problem with the with Ethereum. The gas prices are crazy. Let's say a company wants to reward their shoppers using the Momentum uh, token right now. It's uh, you know you you have to pay a few dollars for every transaction. It's a uh, it's a problem. Uh, so our, our next, yeah, our, our next kind of like uh, thing is go cross chain, solve that issue, and uh, and uh, move on, and move on. Uh, Marco, yeah. can you, can you jump in and give your points of view on what you heard and also the cross the alternative blockchain smackdown? And hi, hmm. and you got to turn on your audio, my friend. I see Marco moving in the. There you go. Yeah, he's ready. 
no sound yet, Marco. <laughs> okay, there we go. There, there we go. go. Yep. Yeah. Welcome to Dubai. Yeah, I know this feeling. Uh, Marco, go ahead. Shatis a lot. <laughs> That's the Arabic word for what they call communications here. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, uh, it's interesting that you that, that people are talking openly about this because, oh my God, Gordon, just keep pounding those back. I am. Uh, <laughs> um, I, 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 comple I completely agree. The, the wonderful thing about blockchain is, is that it's all a proof of concept right now. Let's be fair. Uh, Ethereum is an experiment. It is a very successful experiment. It's showing us a lot of things we can do, but is it perfect? Hell no. And they're working on fixing that. Uh, Casper, uh, as you well know, Gordon, and as many people who've been paying attention know, is basically leapfrogging a lot of the legacy stuff that uh, Ethereum has already decided it needs to move beyond. And they just built a chain that did that already. Um, and hoping to obviously, you know, get ahead of the game on that. But as... Um, both your guests have been mentioning uh, the future is not a single blockchain. It is not even a single blockchain protocol. The future is hundreds of blockchain protocols, many of them specific to use cases that make sense for them. And their transaction volumes will be anything from 10 per second up to 10,000 per second. Not one of them will be able to handle everything for everyone. It's just not viable. Uh, the minute you try to go down that road, you run the risk of either requiring an internet that has uh, terabit speeds to every device, or you have a situation where your security is compromised because you have to reduce the amount of data traffic you're creating by creating all these uh, chains that have to be spanning the entire planet's worth of nodes. And that's why I love the idea of the checkpoint chains, which is something that uh, several companies are already doing uh, using the Bitcoin chain. Uh, where you're building up a private no private set of nodes and you just checkpoint them every every era, if you will, against uh, against Bitcoin, and then you've got proof on chain that your your chain was correct at that point in time. I really strongly believe, and Gordon, you and I have talked about this, is that the future of blockchain is just another database. It is just another database. So if you have a company and they've got operations in India and France and, and South America, they will have three chains. They will have a chain for India and a chain for uh, France and a chain for uh, South America because it's just easy to do that. It's just another database, mm -hmm. right? As long as there is an integration point somewhere in their ecosystem that is probably off chain that allows them to look at the collective data across all three Commercially, they're fine. They don't need to have everything on chain, just the stuff that's critical and handled in a specific way in each jurisdiction based on that local jurisdiction's regulations. I think if you think of everything inside a company that acts as if it was its own little business, so the marketing team and the legal team and everything, and think of each of them having their own ledger and that ledger acts as its own entity in the ecosystem that is both that company and the world at large around it. You can almost see yourself uh, looking at every blockchain implementation in, in the ecosystem of the planet as being treated as if it was another entity like an individual. And if you think about it from that perspective, where an individual is, has different parameters, different attributes than a company, and a company will have different attributes than a division of a company. If you think of them all as if they were people and each of them has a self-sovereign digital identity, and I highly stress self-sovereign, uh, which is a critical thing that uh, many people don't really understand in this world. But basically what it means is when it's a self-sovereign digital identity, it means that nobody has a copy of it except you. No one has a copy, but no one has control of it. Both. No one has a copy of it, and no one has control of it except you. It is self-sovereign. Well, actually, let's say, Marco, hold on one second. So, Ita, I, I see you nodding in a way that implies agreement. Is this resonating with you? Actually, uh, yeah, definitely. I see blockchain as another... Uh tool in my stack for creating an amazing product. Um, that's exactly how I see it. Um, it definitely, it should be how it is envisioned. Of course, 
you create you can create so many kind of like a proof of concepts for banking methods economies whatever but the real kind of applications are still rare okay uh actually i can uh, give uh, give like a really good uh, kudos uh uh, to a company called Rally, I.O. If you're familiar with, uh, yep. they're creating uh, something really cool. Uh, I see the way they incorporated the private chain and the public chain, and they use uh, they use uh, they use blockchain as one of the tools to build a very cool product. And what uh, I see Reta creating something that our company could definitely utilize. Uh, we are facing uh, troubles with the uh, with the uh, c- compliance uh, GDPR rules, whatever, whatever. And if I had a chain that uh, promised me that uh, they, they can support my GDPR needs and my regulation needs. That would be amazing. That's another kind of like use case, a very interesting use case for, for blockchain. It's like- a, you Well, can of course, it, uh, if your identity is purely self-sovereign, you don't have a GDPR issue. That's that's also a problem is that uh, you're dealing with the big, uh, big kind of uh, clients, uh, you know, uh, I, I, in the retail I, Mark- sector. It, Saying uh, self-governance uh, makes them uh, kind of shaky and uh, and their voice crackle. But uh, you know, if it, it will have to mature until you, we can go to to a place where you're self uh, sovereign and uh, and you control everything, there is some uh, there is some way to do so. And uh, meanwhile, we have to bridge uh, bridge that uh, using uh, toolings and uh, whatnot uh, that we have uh, outside or create uh, tools ourselves. Uh, also, by the way, as you mentioned, uh, kind of like a cool uh, POC project that uh, has been running for a while is uh, Datamine. I'm not sure if you heard about it. It's uh, kind of like a, it's a project where they create a conceptual uh, uh, economy, uh, uh, which is pretty what cool. It, what does that mean, you they, they created a kind of economy, economy without, um, sorry, I forgot the one second, without... Um, um, you you can print you can create over like uh, you can print money and you can't basically reach a, a point where there is a, uh, an, an inflation inflationless uh, uh, economy yeah inflationless, inflationless economy okay. yeah 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 they created kind of like a cool uh, POC it can be used definitely I can see uh, uh, people who are using the concept but how do you utilize what they build as a company how do you sell it forward you know uh, it's a very interesting project it's a uh, it's a it gained uh, success. Uh, their their token is uh, I think uh, is being uh, traded for a very nice uh, amount and uh, but then again okay where okay uh, where where's the product what what can I do with it as a company yeah uh, Sandra I think you wanted to introduce your friend from yeah. Turkey who's a yeah. new guest especially because this is a special show and this is a special friend of of ours of Ita and mine this is Miss Melas she's from Turkey she's one of the Momentum ambassadors. And she, she texted me, can I can I get into the show to ask some questions to Itai and the rest to Red? I said, sure. So Melis, first of all, welcome to the show live from Turkey. So maybe you can introduce yourself, where you're from, and pop your questions uh, towards our guest speakers. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, sorry, I'm at the outside. So yeah, uh, for everything, for everything, thank you. Uh, well, actually, I have one question uh, about ensuring the compliance in a decentralized network, because uh, in a decentralized network, questions arise on who within this network falls into the roles of data controllers and the data processors, uh, as in which case under the GDPR, and uh, therefore who is responsible for the obligations and the responsibilities that come with these roles. And uh, in a private blockchain, this may be easier to reconcile where the technology is being used solely by one company as part of its back office functions. So uh, the, what do you think about this, uh, the compliance and GDPR in a decentralized network? Yeah, that, that, that is exactly the reason why we spinned up the Europe chain. Uh, and that is also why all the block producers are in Europe uh, at, at the time that we were designing and, and writing all the terms and conditions, uh, we were also, there's a, there's a very good block producer in the UK that basically due to all, all the Brexit, uh, um, we, we, we couldn't include them in our, in our project because that would mean that we would have to have data processing agreements between them and uh, um, and us and and that would make things so much more complicated so that would that is the reason Red, I gotta why jump we... in one second it, it had actually previously not occurred to me 
which I, I'm kind of embarrassed about, that Brexit affected GDPR with respect to the UK. Are they still yeah. under GDPR or what, what happened they, there? They, they implemented GDPR. Um, it, GDPR is a regulation. So um, th that regulation was implemented in the UK. Um, it is implemented in multiple jurisdictions, by the way, or a lot of other countries took the GDPR as an example. So there's countries in Africa that have privacy laws that are 90% identical. The privacy law of uh, 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 California is pretty identical to the GDPR. It only introduces one additional concept that is interesting. It introduces a, a household and a household uh, could be you, you as a family with father, mother and children. So you um, can assign, assign roles. And, and a, student, uh, a, a student house, for example, you could also mm -hmm. assign roles to other people. And um, what was also said about self-sovereign identity uh, previously, um, if, if you have full self-sovereign identity implementations for businesses, then you don't have any hassle with uh, GDPR. Um, well, you are always need to be compliant to GDPR, so you always have a little bit of hassle. But if you write your privacy impact assessment, and and you do that in a f in a fully self sovereign identity way, your challenge is so much more easy because you're not collecting the information. You you give the rights to control that information to the user. So our identity system is aimed to do that. One of the example use cases that we used uh, when we were designing the product was requesting a mortgage. If you request a mortgage in the Netherlands or in Europe or in, I'm in Portugal right now, uh, I'm in that process right now, I need to upload or send or attach to an email to one girl, a mailman, to banks, salary slips, um, all the movements of all my bank accounts, a shitload of documentation, really, really, really a shitload of documentations, and see, see is just a private individual, um, freelance person that gets paid on selling mortgages to me by banks behind her. See forwards that email to six banks to, to find the best uh, uh, conditions for me. It is a cyber, cyber risk uh, waiting to happen. Sure. She doesn't want that. She doesn't need that information. She just wants to help me and, and get her commission. Uh, so if we could have like a Dropbox where she don't see, so she just sees that I uploaded the passport. So the passport is in the, in the Dropbox and, and she could somehow share that with the bank. So that is what we're building. So a self-sovereign Dropbox to use that name, that banks could access my my data, but I I keep control. That's uh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. yeah go it's ahead. A very, there's a, a very interesting use case maybe for uh, credit uh, credit systems, credit yeah. ratings, etc., uh, where you have an immutable uh, past and you know that this is your credit score, this is what you've done uh, over the years, and this yeah. is your final score, and that's it. Yeah. It's very interesting. So that, that, is, that is, I think, the future. Uh, uh, corporations don't want to have the data. They need to, to assess, uh, but they, they, it's, it's challenging for them as well. I mean, collecting all that data, if you get hacked, you can get serious fines from the European Commission. And there has been serious examples. Uh, airlines uh, uh, had to pay 150 million pounds in, in the UK yeah. uh, because they got hacked. And, and to be honest, if I would advise, need to advise, or I'm a system integrator supporting that, that, that airline, I can't guarantee that they can't get hacked. The tech stack is just not robust enough. So they need to comply to the law. They have a risk for fines, but the tech stack underneath to support you to not get hacked is not available. It's, it's, Guys, it's let, let me even. jump in. One, let me, sorry, let me jump in one, one sec. Um, Andy, are you available? And Simon, I know you got strong views on this and change. And Ilvers, you're welcome to join, even though you said Ite is much younger than I am. 
<laughs> Which is true, actually. I'm actually I'm actually up there with Rhett. So Ilver's only comment to everyone was his his only comment was literally that Ite looks much younger than I do. Thanks. Thanks. I noted. Uh Simon, Andy, are you there? I, I'm here, Gordon. Yeah, I'm listening still. Hey, hey Simon, uh, do, do you want to show your face and introduce yourself? Your oh, gosh, I have to get up for that. Hang on a sec. <laughs> and then Andy, uh, Andy, friend, you know, is a gentleman I met through Sonder, which I really appreciate. Real expert on blockchain tech, published author. Um, yeah, we very familiar with with the, with the Asian market. We actually worked with uh, Andy recently with uh, with our token launch. Uh, very good. Uh, Andy's experience. great. Uh, Simon will be with us in a second here. And Victoria is in stealth mode because she's surrounded by people, but she is very connected with the Dubai blockchain community. And uh, did we lose Marco? We probably did. Marco yeah, got called off Marco, because of Marco, ETA. Marco's out. I think si Simon is still here with us. Yeah. So, so, I, Simon is I, making, him, I, I making himself here. presentable. Ah, okay. I am still here. No, I'm not. <laughs> uh, Simon, you got to turn on video so we can see your, your smiling face. I am, I am one second. Sorry. Right. Um, Somewhat in silhouette was, mode. No, uh, I'm in silhouette mode mode only because it's the. There you go. That's that's the other way around. So Simon Good just moved. How, how's your move going? Or is your move completed? Uh, yeah, I'm in the hotel at the moment, so uh, I I thought I'd come back for the afternoon. I'm actually in a really nice hotel uh, overlooking the golf course, which is really. Lovely. And I am enjoying a little wine with you, Gordon. Yeah, you saw that. I actually thought my video was off when I was taking the shot, but oh well. So now it's been memorialized forever. Look, I'm in Mykonos. You know what? I'm just enjoying life. Um, anyway, Simon, you, you've got a very interesting background. Obviously, you know, it's a finance oriented background, but you're heavily involved in blockchain and this sort of infrastructure. And I'm wondering, just to put you on the spot, what, what resonates with you in the challenges that Red and Ite are articulating? Um, blockchain efficiency and sort of the privacy slash consortium aspect. I'm just wondering if anything occurs. Mm. I, I, love the, I love the GDPR and the angle and your comment about the uh, borderless uh, uh, sort of merger with a, a very much a border driven uh, legal framework. I wonder, obviously there, there are other versions of the same thing um, we, we've talked quite uh, quite a bit about DAOs and um, mm -hmm. the the last element of uh, uh, of the conversation around um, how GDPR uh, uh, is 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 sort of driving towards protecting people and their data, and then um, giving someone access to an immutable data center where they uh, allow. Uh, you know, if you like, call it a, a private key access. Um, there's a couple of uh, provenance um, uh, uh, crypto projects out there that have been around for quite some time that have similar sort of attributes. But I wonder whether I wonder whether it goes even further than that, and whether or not you you can manage your whole um, existence through your own data center. So not just um, not just your sort of KYC AML information, banking information, but things like um, uh, you know your car registrations, access to access to insurance details, um, and whether any of the gentlemen have, have actually considered that sort of wider uh, life. Uh, they call it data administration. I, I always find myself constantly. Uh, re-registering a car or re-registering yeah. a company, doing my licenses for, for companies, all, all those sorts of things. John? Red, E.T.? Yeah, well, there's there's uh, a lot of questions in, in, the, in that question, yes. <laughs> I, I would say. That, that, that's um, Simon. <laughs> yeah, By the way, Simon, yeah. just, just to give you context, this is a very deep thinker really good at structuring complex financial transactions. And this is sort of the way his mind works, layers on layers. So just, <laughs> yeah, just kind of yeah. roll with it. <laughs> Thanks, Gordon. Yeah, so, it's true, right? So, so yeah, well, I, I, our answer is that we we are building this this these layers of, of pieces of the puzzle, I would say. 
and then it's up to the use case to do uh, what they want to do. Um, and, and now we are building uh, uh, this product called Mighty, which is a self-sovereign identity system. And we're embracing uh, this, I hope, future standards of the W3C uh, DID and verified credentials. So what you could do is, so you type in your, um, your birth date and the uh, birth certificate management company of, of, of the Netherlands. So the, the, the municipality where you live, they have uh, a function called verified credentials and, and you could basically ask them to confirm that the date that you entered into MIDI um, is the correct date. So you have a verified credential being this, this old. Others could use using zero knowledge proof uh, just a simple question, are you above 18 or uh, less than 18? So I think we're building this infrastructure layer by layer to enhance privacy, to enhance um, ease of use. Um, and DID and verified credentials are, I think, very important developments in that. Um, yeah, that that is how I, I, I see a, a part of the answer of, of your thinking on, on identity. I think a lot of problems that we have are coming from the fact that the physical world and the digital world is not connected in a proper way. Uh, that's why we have uh, Zoom spammers and we have fraudulent elections and we have seven billion new people on Facebook. Um, and I, I got it added by half of them yesterday. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think if we could build this bridge between, and before we couldn't, right? I mean, before we had, we didn't have blockchain. Now we have blockchain and we're now trying to figure out efficient mechanisms in the tech stack. So how do we scale and efficient mechanisms in governance efficient mechanisms in and yeah we, we we choose to approach this from a from a european regulatory uh, approach um, and we found uh, if you take all the academic papers on blockchain and uh, and gdpr 70 percent says it cannot be done um, due to the right to be forgotten yeah i think we 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 have nailed it down to to that it can be done and we can help companies to, to utilize the strength of this technology because they really need it. it, it that's the, the funny thing even in, the, uh, in this space. Interesting. Um, yeah, basically uh, the way we deal with uh, this is uh, we have um, kind of like an obfuscated uh, kind of ID over the blockchain uh, connecting between our private and, and public blockchain, which makes uh, the kind of like public ID useless if uh, if uh, data is being erased from our kind of like uh, pri uh, private blockchain and database uh, more the database or all all relations uh, to to that customer are being erased that customer does not does not exist anymore and no one will be able to know understand or even connect the the, the, the dots so this is uh, how we 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 deal with it right now um yeah but uh, reta kind of like a uh, Kind of like uh, summed it up um, with uh, with what he said. Um, yeah, it's a it's a something that will have to be developed. And uh, as as we all said, the blockchain is still a kind of young, and uh, and we have to learn how to utilize it uh, to its uh, to its uh, maximum kind of like a, a potential. Um, and uh, Rhett is uh, helping out with the GDPR, kind of like a regulatory sector with this company. And we need to see more companies like that uh, that uh, that are really helping. Uh, more traditional companies and uh, people who who are dealing with companies that are dealing with traditional customers or traditional tech customers, uh, creating kind of like a safe net environment for those retailers or whoever customers uh, that are that are that are joining in. Uh, yeah. Cool. G Gordon, I see that we've got a good friend from Asia, from Singapore, Mr. Andy Leon in the show. So he, he already texted a few things in the chat box. So let's get Andy involved in the, into Please. the conversation because. He's got some questions. Andy, 
Hi, how are you, my friends? Wait, Andy, you have to take yourself off mute. Hey, guys. Sorry. Yeah. There you are. Sorry, hey, I, was, I was reading some stuff. Hey, hi, hi, Itai. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, sorry, I, I wasn't really listening to a lot of things, but 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 <laughs> okay. maybe maybe just a few cents worth, you know, from from my end, is that you know I I I I I tend to be a very real person, you know, very practical, you know. If there is no no real usage on 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 the blockchain, there's no real business, you know. What what's that to talk about privacy and uh, GDPR and so forth? You know, when, whenever I meet friends, you know, in Europe, UK, and so forth, especially, you know, they start to talk about the this topic, and um, you know, they they started to talk to me about digital identity and so forth, you know, how, how the blockchain is going to, is, is going to make things a lot better, you know, but, but my, 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 my view is this, you know, I, I don't really, um, you know, I don't really see, see privacy as a very big issue, you know, in the, in the blockchain space, you know, in the blockchain space, you know, when we talk about cryptocurrency and so forth, I think the privacy issue is being, being too, not private, you know, you're not telling people anything, you're trying to hide behind many different uh, fences, you know, hide behind different firewall memes and so forth. I think, I think we, we, we need more people to show themselves out, you know, to tell them who they are, what they, what, what they are after, and so forth and so on, you know. So I, I think on, on the privacy part, I, this is what I see, you know, then, then in the very earlier conversation, you know, I heard about Things like uh, you know, um, you know, Ethereum is being being expensive. I, I I heard Itai saying that you know the the gas fees on 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 uh, this uh, Uniswap is is uh, horrendous. You know, but 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 we, we got to think from a more um, more 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 industrial wide kind of a thing. You know, e Ethereum you know did did well for us. You know, whether it's for the, the DeFi market, you know, one year ago or right now in terms of NFT. You know, or two zero one seven in terms of the uh, ICO, they have, all, they have always been the leader taking the lead. By taking the lead, you know, these also mean that they have a huge liquidity. They have a big innovation team. You know, they they are they are big into community, big into the support, and of course, the layer two are also there. You know, just to facilitate some of the uh, some of the gaps that that we all see in the market. You know, so so I I, I don't think. You know, Ethereum is 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 all about high fees, uh, uh, inefficiency, and so mm -hmm. forth and so on. You know, a, a lot of the projects right now built on BS, uh, built on Ethereum. You know, and are also using you know what has been done throughout the years. You know, uh, on Ethereum, you know, onto their chain. You know, a lot of them are ad adaptation to what this uh, grandfather ha has done for the for the past years. You know, and that's why we are enjoying what we see right now. You know, whether it's a BSC, for example, you know, um, you know, we can say that it's a fork. We can say that it's a, you know, it's part of the the, the Ethereum network. But whatever it is, you know, um, the, the 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 birth of BSC, for example, Binance Smart Chain is also mm -hmm. with the help of Ethereum, right? So we have to give credit to 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 that big brother uh, of, of ours, and. You know, having fees that are that are small or, or, or even free, you know, is not the way to go. You know, this gives people or projects a lower bar to enter into the blockchain space. Thus, you see a lot of spams, scams, and then you see a lot of rug pull. You know, that's what you see, you know, previously on, on Tron, for example, you know, uh, Justin Sun, which is, uh, you know, that was about one and a half years ago. You see a lot of uh, all this rug pull, and then when BSC came in, you know everyone shifted there because BSC not only they are cheap, I mean cheaper, mm -hmm. but they have the liquidity, they have the base, they have the users and so forth. Anyone going there with a good marketing plan um, and, and and strong community, they could easily pull out 20, 30, 20, 30 million dollars rug pull very fast. You know. So again, this goes back to the fact is, is, is that, you know, I see there's a, there's a good use case for BSC. I also see that there is a good need to have Ethereum to stay because that is the foundation of, of, of many other things, you know. So that, that's my, that's my uh, few cents worth. I, I'm not sure what else I've typed, you know. Um, 
again, uh, I, oh, okay, I saw my point number two is about ge 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 geographical bounded blockchain. You know, um, you know, my, my take is, you know, we could always say what we want, you know, but what, what we really see, you know, at least from my end or from, uh, from, uh, from a government standpoint, you know, where they really want real usage, you know, they want chains or they want companies that have the experience to, to do it, you know, not just, just, just theory, you know, not just, you know, having very good uh, uh, SOP, what to do A, what to do B, what to do C, you know, they also want to see that it's practical. You know, th this, is, this is one thing that is really missing in the blockchain space right now. Uh, there's a lot of theory, a lot of good concepts, but none of them are into, into real execution. Many of them are not into real execution. You see a lot of fake volumes, fake transactions, you know, and then, and then you started to think that, oh, with all these fake transactions, I need the speed, you know, but all these things are not necessary. Is there a need to do that? Well, that, that's, a, that's a story for developer to, uh, to, to, to really share. Man. So my take is this, um, we just got to be realistic on some of the things that we are doing. Most importantly for all the projects is to find real business. You know, like Itai, I think on his end, it should be fairly straightforward, you know, uh, rewards, you know, uh, whether that's AI or not AI, as long as you could convert the, the rewards from uh, uh, vendor A to vendor B and then to vendor C, you know, life goes on, you know, this is what the user really want, you know, from a, from a user standpoint, you know, um, for rate, I'm not sure what was his business, but, but, the, but, but the main thing is this, we have to find real usage, you know, I think Gordon would have uh, agreed with me after drinking a few shots I saw. You Actually, know. I think that uh, everyone that uh, talked uh, agree with you, to be honest, uh, regarding the fact that there are too many theoretical kind of like uh, projects and uh, a lot of uh, projects that are just don't have a business. Uh, Correct. And it, it, Correct. It's, it's, it's creating a barrier for companies uh, like Momentum, uh, where they need to compete with fake volume, market make, with, with crazy stuff that can't, you know, how, how, am, how am I supposed as a, as a genuine as a genuine product company with a very kind of like a with a good use case I guess uh, a good use for blockchain a good use for crypto um, compete with the people who are just fake voluming like crazy that's 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 kind of like a, it's very hard it's not impossible but it's very hard and uh, I definitely is. agree I, well, definitely I think agree. you need to build applications that people are actually using and have those applications yes. achieve their Correct. own public identity and and I, acknowledgement. Yeah, I, I definitely. I, 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 I think I think we have to we have to also be mindful about two things. One is, what role are you taking on? You know, are you an innovator or are you an investor? I give you an example. Let, let's say if I take on an investor role right now, I would probably go for memes uh, 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 to tokens. You know, whether it's going to be a cat, it's going to be a dog, or, or or whichever, because that is the trend. You know, you know, get, getting a three x five x not an issue at all, right? So as an investor, you know, if you, if you are looking at the money side of things, not a problem. But if you are if you are an investor that is looking at something more long term, you know what Gordon said is is really spot on. We have to find things that are usable. You know, it is part of a daily life. You know, integrated into part of the daily life. And and the best thing is let's not talk about blockchain. Is it could be integrated into your reward system. For example, for Itai, it could be into the, the Starbucks reward system or Singapore Airline reward system, but not telling people that it's blockchain. You know, that, 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 is, the key, that is the key thing, right, Itai? Sorry, I saw you unmute, so you have some comment. Man. No, no, definitely. I was just uh, preparing myself to comment. Uh, I, I completely agree with you. <laughs> I, definitely, I definitely agree with you, uh, Andy, and uh, you know that uh, we think uh, commonly regarding this uh, this kind of uh, issue. And uh, but um, you need to lower the barrier on the people who are implementing uh, blockchain into their companies and innovating over blockchain uh, in order for me to be very very straightforward when I go to a customer and uh, say, "Hey, I'm a crypto company. Do you want to launch your 2.5 billion dollar?" reward program on my uh, on my crypto company platform it's uh, it's the dream yeah but it's very hard to achieve right now there is a very there's a gap that needs to be closed uh, using uh, education uh, more adaptation from from corporates uh, like Kafur in Italy uh, that you can see a lot of projects uh, happening there um, mm -hmm. there are many as a as a red uh, red probably has a 
a hundred more kind of like examples uh, for for big entities uh, implementing a, a blockchain. But this has to happen in order for me as a company to just uh, flash out my crypto kind of like a, a flag and say, yeah, guys, I'm a, I'm a crypto company. Come launch your 2.5 billion uh, reward program on my on my uh, blockchain or on my crypto uh, asset. Um, it will get there. Yeah, it will get there. And this is what I'm trying to to tell people uh, that are supporting uh, our our project. Um, it takes time. I, uh, yeah. I, I I just want to add on a bit. You know, sorry to, yeah, yeah. to just interrupt, but but I, I think I think the fact right now at this current moment is that you know, most people understand what is uh, cryptocurrency right now and what it can do. You know, especially for Itai's business, they, they they do understand you know how it works and so forth. But going out there to tell people that you are a crypto company. Is not going to give you much credibility, all right. So, so like for example, you know, you can say that you are a blockchain company at most, you know, yep. pro- solutions provider, you know, at most. But, but the, the 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 positioning of the company must be very straightforward. Today, I'm a I'm a light, uh, maybe a, a rewards company, all right. Uh, position yourself as a rewards company. Go in there with the right solution, you know how they could calculate the rewards back end using blockchain so that all these things can be done 24-7, for example, across multiple platforms. I think that's, that's the use case for blockchain for rewards. And then, and then if they are more open after the rewards, you know, after you get married, you know, after you hold, hold her hands, right? You know, you know what, what she actually wants, then the next step would be, hey, man, you know, do you want to do it in a crypto manner, right? And, and then rent might, might, might come to the picture and say that, hey, you know, since there's a usage, there's a business case, you know, um, uh, these are some of the criteria that you need to do, you know, in order to be compliant, you know, and then if you are compliant, this is, you know, this, this you, you, are, you are able to launch your, your, your crypto business or integration into the crypto side of things. I think that, that, is, that, that, is, uh, that is another step, you know, forward. But of course, there's an in-between step, you know, which is just asking them to use crypto to pay, right? So that would be an in-between step, right? use crypto to pay, you know, then use crypto as a reward, then slowly tokenize their whole business into, into a, a, a crypto centric business, you know, that could be the end goal. But I think right now for Itai's business, best thing is to position yourself as a rewards expert, you know, a rewards porter where you could, you know, you could bridge across multiple uh, product, bridge across multiple chain, you know, right now we are not just, talking about things like, you know, in the past, we talk about, oh, this is a private chain, a public chain. I think I heard something from, from Marco uh, just now. You know, oh, this is, a, this is a private node. This is a private chain. I think nowadays, you know, we are in 2021. The thing that we should really look at, look at is how are multiple chain going to work with each other? You know, are there different APIs or different layer that could work together? You know, right now, this should be the talking point and no longer trying to tell people that oh, this is the private chain, you know, it, it's, it's better, you know, it's, it's less nodes and, and, and things like that. I, I, I guess... I guess uh, Sandra, uh, I think we have our topic for our next show. <laughs> we have, and now that, now that we got the mic for one second back, because I do want to respect Red's time, because Red has to leave for a, a different uh, business meeting. Maybe Red, any final comments from your side to, towards the audience that are here or watching the recording? No, yeah, the, the, uh, I, I think uh, Andy rightly said the, the the blockchain and the crypto space, they love each other, but they also have a very difficult uh, relationship. Um, the, crypt, the crypto space is viewed upon uh, very, very strangely. Um, I noticed that myself in the cybersecurity specialists the, that I called my friends for, for many years because I have a cybersecurity company. There's a lot, a lot of cybersecurity specialists that really look very strangely to blockchain. Uh, in my opinion, blockchain can really solve some of the issues in that industry and, and, and cyber security, uh, cybersecurity specialists, I don't know, they look down on blockchain or they, they, they make fun of it. And, and, and crypto and blockchain also have this very difficult relationship sometimes. Yeah, sorry, I have to have to go to the to the, to the next thing that is organized. That I um, actually, I, I think we're going to wrap. So we're, yeah. we're 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 good. Red, stay with it for one second. I want I want to really thank our guests 
uh, Red and Itay, appreciate taking the time. We know you're both very busy, but it's, it's fantastic projects and you're both interesting. It's, it, you know, you're coming to this from diverse angles, but I think there's a lot of interesting conversation generated by hearing those diverse angles and sort of integrating them. And I appreciate our guests for popping in here and, and adding their comments. Uh, Sandra, do you want to, as I like to say, land the plane? Yeah, I think we can do a big follow-up on all the items that, that were discussed. So, Red, thank you. Itai, thank, also, you thank you. Appreciate your time. Um, also, our guests and the people that joined the call, like Marco, like Miss Mellis from Turkey, and also Andy, our good friends from Singapore. Thank you for joining. Simon, uh, our, our new guest, our, Simon, our new number one fan. Sorry for, for, for missing him out. So, okay. we will post a recording on the YouTube channel so you can spread it with your network. I think, Gordon, we have some nice topics for the next upcoming shows but the first 25 shows i think i need to turn off my video every time i'm in greece having a drink i was you know <laughs> you oh, oh well you know sorry guys what can i say this is my I broke character so. a, lot of, a lot of people took the screenshots while you were taking the the, the shot so well, you, 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 you know what my friends are my friends and everyone else can just you know have their own business <laughs> have their own lives so. well good Okay, so for everybody now thanks for now stay healthy stay safe and we look forward to seeing you in the next couple of shows, which will broadcast in the next couple of weeks. So thank you for now. Have a good day, everybody. And we look forward to seeing you again. Yes, I appreciate everyone. Thank you so much. Thanks.